Hi uh, everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today we've got a nice problem where we're going to use Bernoulli's and continuity equation to look at fluids in different cross-sectional pipes. So here we've got a system. There's three different uh, pipes. There's the first one is kind of like a large reservoir and that's connected to a a larger pipe that I've labeled B, and then that goes off to a smaller pipe that might lead all the way to your house. The question is, how are we gonna find the pressure everywhere and the speed of the water flowing in these different sections of pipes? We're gonna use Bernoulli's equation and our you know, flow equation or the continuity equation in order to solve this problem. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. The best way to support Physics Ninja is to like the video and to subscribe to my channel. All right, let's get started with the questions. All right, so here are the uh, specific questions that I want to look at for this system. So I have assumed here that the height of the water level relative to this line here that goes through the center of both of these pipes is approximately four meters. Um, I've also given you the cross-sectional areas of the various sections. So the reservoir is typically very, very big. So I'm just going to write it as big. I'm not even going to give you a number for that. Uh, for section B, I've given it as 0 0.0025 meters squared and section C like this. Now sometimes uh, what problems might just give you the radius, for example, of section B versus the radius of section C. Well, in that case, you could simply calculate it uh, just using our pi r squared, because this is kind of the cross-section area. But here I've given you the actual areas. All right, so we have two different situations. In case one, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to assume that I have a plug there, which means that it's not moving. There's nothing moving. It becomes simply a hydrostatics problem because I've placed a plug right here at the end, okay? Uh, section two, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the plug and then we're going to assume that water is flowing here. All right, it's flowing down through the reservoir and through the various pipes. So for the static case, very, very simple. What is the pressure at point B? What is the pressure at point C? Uh, and when we remove the plug, I'm going to ask you, what is the velocity at the different sections over here? How fast is this fluid moving? So what's the velocity at point C versus point B? And also maybe a harder question is, what is the pressure here at point B once things are moving? And how does it compare to the first case, for example, when we don't have fluid that's moving? All right, so let's go set up our two equations. They're right up here, our continuity equation. Uh, area times the speed is a constant value and Bernoulli's equation, uh, which is also listed up here. Let's set it up for this problem. So let's first do the static case. The static case here is with the plug present. Now the first assumption that I'm gonna have over here is that this reservoir here is open to the atmosphere. Okay, and if I make that assumption, it means that the pressure, at least at the top of this fluid, is simply equal to atmospheric condition, P atmosphere. All right, let's go ahead now and write down Bernoulli's equation. Really, if we're looking for the pressure at uh, point B, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare everything at point A to everything at point B. Let me see how you, how you would write Bernoulli's equation here, which is the top one for this uh, situation. And we're not going to use our flow equation over here because there's nothing moving, so all the speeds here have to be equal to zero. So this is what we, it would look like. We'd have the pressure at point A. The second term would be the density of the fluid multiplied by little g and multiplied by the height of point A. And then the next part, again, I'll just write it down, but all these other terms are going to cancel. All these kinetic energy terms will cancel because nothing is moving. There's a plug in place preventing anything to move. All right, there's the pressure at point B. Let's continue writing all the terms here. Uh, the height of point B. And now, plus the kinetic energy contribution, the velocity b squared. All right, so let's start by eliminating both of those. Since it is at rest because of this condition over here, it has a plug in place. What I'm trying to solve here is for the pressure at point B. So what I do is simply move this other term to the other side. And if I rewrite this equation, it kind of looks like this. It's the pressure at point A. And then plus rho g. Now we have ya on this side. And on the other side, I'm going to bring this term on the other side, so that switches signs, so it's negative YB. Now, the reason I kind of like it in this form here now, you can see that right away we can calculate the pressure at point B because it's the pressure at point A, uh, which is simply atmospheric pressure, plus rho G. Now, what is this term here, YA minus YB? Well, let's go to our diagram. Uh, YA is this entire height, right? say measured from the ground. This would be YA. Uh, YB would be this little guy, YB. 
So you can see that YA minus YB is simply going to be this height. How high is the top of the water relative to this point B? So that is simply what I'm going to call H. Okay. And now all we have to do is substitute all our numbers. So we have uh, atmospheric pressure. Let's just take standard conditions, 101.3 kilopascals, plus uh, rho is the density of water, is 1,000. Uh, little g, let's just take 9.8, and multiplied by my height, which is 4. Uh, if I go ahead now and I rewrite or calculate these two different terms uh, separately, this second contribution here, this gives me approximately 39,000. 200 pascals. So at the end, if I add it all together, uh, the pressure at point B uh, should be equal, if I did the math correctly, uh, 140.5 kilopascals. Now let's just write it in pascals like this. And there's the answer, okay? So you see that the pressure is simply going to be higher because I'm at a certain depth, right, below the surface of the water. And we should know that pressure increases as you go down uh, below the surface of the water. All right, the next one is super easy was, what is the pressure then at point C? Again, we're still taking the static case. And in case of the static case, you should right away, we should be able to rewrite our Bernoulli's equation, except this time, instead of having Bs here, what we would have would be Cs, right? We'd have the pressure at point C, we'd have the height of point C, and we'd have the velocity at point C. And again, since the plug is in place, nothing is moving, therefore we would cancel it out. And at the end, you can see that the pressure at point C would be exactly identical. The formulas are the exact same. And what we do have right here is that the height of here is exactly the same as the height of point B, right? Because I'm just evaluating the pressure along this line, which runs through the center of both pipes. So at the end, this is actually pretty straightforward. Well, let's just keep the same color over here. Uh, that the pressure of everywhere along this line has to be the same because it's always at the same depth below the surface. So we're going to get 140,500 pascals everywhere along this line. doesn't matter on the radius because it's all the same height uh, from the ground and also the same distance from the surface. All right, let's consider the case now where we remove the plug. All right, so the next part here what we're going to do is we're going to uh, remove the plug uh, let me go ahead and just kind of draw this and let's just get rid of it over here like this. All right. So now we're going to have water that's moving in the system. The first question I have is what is the velocity, right? If I was going to write it down, what is the velocity VC down here as it's going out? So uh, first thing we want to do is write down our continuity equation and let's compare everything at the top to everything here at point C. So this is what Bernoulli's equation would say. Is this the pressure at point A? plus this uh, potential energy term, plus one half rho VA squared, that's the kinetic energy term, that has to be equal to everything at point C. All right, so this is what this looks like, a YC and then plus one half rho VC squared. So you see that the reason I wanna do this is now we've introduced our variable that we're trying to solve for, right? This is the velocity at point C. Now we have to figure out, are there any terms here that I can cancel out? Well, remember what we have here is we have that this was open to the atmosphere, okay? If that's open to the atmosphere, we said that the pressure at point A is equal to atmospheric pressure. Now what happens here if I remove the plug? If I remove the plug, it also means that the pressure over here must also be equal to atmospheric pressure. Okay, whenever you have open things to air, we have atmospheric pressure on both sides. So that means that both of these terms are basically going to be atmospheric pressure, which means I can get rid of them. All right, now there's one more term here that I have to worry about. I know the height difference between point A and point C, so that'll take care of both of those terms. However, what do I do about this guy right here, right? How do I deal with this term? That's the kinetic energy of the water flowing down here. Now, again, it involves this term here, which is the velocity of the fluid at point A. Now, one thing we know from continuity equation, and if this is a giant reservoir, okay, basically what happens here from continuity equation is that the speed at this particular point, it's not zero, but it's gonna be very, very small, right? If I have a giant reservoir or a lake, right? The speed that it's, the fluid is moving down is going to be negligible. So this term over here, basically what happens is we're going to 
Forget about it because it's small. Now, if you'd have a finite size container where the area was comparable to these other two, then I would have to keep that term. But for now, we're just going to cancel it. It simplifies our problem a little bit. So all we have to do now is just group some of the terms. Uh, let's bring everything, kind of group these potential energy terms together. This looks very similar to what we saw previously, and that has to be equal to 1 half rho Vc squared. Uh, notice we have the density on both sides. We can cancel that. And this too, I can bring it over to the other side and then simply take the square root to get the velocity at point C all by itself. So this becomes two multiplied by little g. And again, remember what this term is. This is simply the height difference between point A and point C. And that is what our height h is right here. That's our four meters. All right, so let me go ahead and just write it as h. Now, if I substitute in all our numbers, we get 2 multiplied by little g, 9.8, and multiplied by the height, which is 4. All right, I put things in the calculator. Uh, what I got was the velocity at point C is approximately 8.85. That would be in meters per second. All right, great. Uh, the next question is, what is the velocity here at point B? All right, how do we find the velocity here at point B in this larger section of pipe? So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the continuity equation because I know everything about this side. Start off by writing the continuity equation. So again, here I'm going to compare everything at section B to everything at section C. Again, we have something like this. Um, area at B multiplied by the velocity at B. This here has to be equal to area at C multiplied by the velocity at C. Now, we've just solved for the velocity at C, so we know this. And I've given you the area up here for this section. So that means the only unknown, actually, is really our velocity at section B. So I can use this equation in order to solve for that. So let's go ahead and isolate it. So we have this ratio of the areas, AC over AB, and multiplied by the velocity that we just obtained. So AC divided by AB, you could see that this here is five times bigger than this one. So this ratio here is actually going to be one over five, right? The area of B is bigger. Uh, therefore, the velocity is going to be smaller. It's going to be one fifth smaller because that's the ratio of the areas. So at the end, you substitute this in your calculator. You should get approximately 1.77, I think I got, uh, meters per second. So our last problem here is what is the pressure down over here at point B? Again, we know the pressure at a couple points. We know here it's atmospheric, it's open, open reservoir. And we also know right here, this is open to the atmosphere. So the pressure at point C is also atmospheric pressure. Well, if you're looking for the pressure now at point B, not only is there a static contribution because this point is below the surface of the water by four meters, but since the fluid is moving also, we have to consider that and we've calculated how fast it's moving in that section. So let's write down Bernoulli's equation and I could choose, I always have to compare two points. So let's compare point A. Let's write down all those terms. Okay, what else? We have the kinetic energy, VA squared, and that has to be equal to everything at point B. Well, this is what we have at point B, rho G, the height of that fluid, and then plus its kinetic energy contribution. Now I could also write down the terms for point C, and that's fine. I could do that. It doesn't, there's nothing stopping me from doing that. Um, all right, first thing, can we cancel anything? Well, I think the only thing I could safely cancel here is that, remember, since we've assumed that this is big, we said that the velocity at point A is going to be negligibly small. So let's just eliminate this term. The term I'm trying to solve for is right here, so we have to get it all by itself. So let's bring all the other terms on the other side and see what this looks like. So we have PB equals to, we're going to have PA on this side. Well, that's atmospheric pressure. Let's call it P atmosphere. Uh, we have this, and then once I bring this term on the other side, this term looks exactly like the static case that I did earlier, right? Oh, this should be negative. Oh, let's go back, fix that. Uh, negative YB. And then we also have this kinetic energy term, which once I bring it on the other side, it becomes negative. And rho VB squared. Let's see, do I know everything in this 
expression. Well, this is exactly the first problem I solved today, <laughs> right? And when I solve this, I got 140,500 Pascals. When you substitute our value over here, right? This is going to be 1.77. It's pretty small. You end up multiplying it by the density of water, which makes it a little bit bigger. But this second contribution right here, this kinetic energy term, uh, this guy actually, once you substitute the numbers, you're actually only going to get 1,566 Pascals. All right, so we get this kind of really large number and then we take a little bit away from it. So at the end, the pressure at point B is going to be, well, one, I got 1,389,00 uh, zero, zero, uh, Pascals. So one thing to notice is that in the first part, we found that the pressure at point B was actually equal to 1, 140,000. And now we get a number that's slightly smaller when it's moving, right? And that's kind of consistent with uh, Bernoulli's principle, right? Fast moving fluids is a lower pressure there, right? So here the pressure is what we just calculated, 138,900 Pascals. All right, this is how I would set up this problem. Again, you could have set up the equation using point C as my comparison. It wouldn't have changed anything. You would have used a different velocity term here, but we would have got the same answer at the end of the day. All right, thanks for watching, folks. Hopefully you learned how to use both of these equations.